I'm excited to share Bill as an exclusive sponsor of the Thrivecast. They have been sponsoring the Thrivecast for so long. Thank you, Bill. Our firm has been using Bill for over a decade now. We actually use it in all of our foundational CFO and controllership engagements. We have to turn all of our clients' financial processes digital, and we do that with Bill. And you can check out some webinars and blogs and even toolkits that I build with Bill to help in your firm. So thank you, Bill, for being a sponsor of the Thrivecast. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thrivecast. We are pumped to have you. Before we dive into the show with our awesome guest that I'm going to introduce in a minute, I want to talk about Deeper Weekend Thrival's 12th annual Deeper Weekend Conference. Actually, our guest kind of helped us really form a lot of the marketing of our conference years ago. People don't know that, but it's a really great uh, foundation that she brought to help us. So this year in Deeper Weekend, we're talking about acquire, sell, merge, and scale. These are the different things, the four different things we're going to dive into and the way firms are really coming into the marketplace and just dealing with you know, all kind of private equity money coming in. Some are trying to figure out what they're supposed to do with their career, things like that. So we're going to have live panelists. We're going to have a lot of great sponsors that are going to help us figure this out. So- Everybody knows my guest, Karen Rayburn from The Profitable Firm. Everybody? So everybody Literally everybody? Karen. So okay. I'm going to welcome sure. you. Now, I, normally I have this big, long bio I read, but you Maybe have- we a, just do the short version. You have a short for version. For like the one or two people. Yeah. Okay. So my short version Hit is it. I'm Karen. I'm the owner of PF, which is a creative agency that helps <clears throat> accountants with their marketing. And I've just finished my first book. The Accountant Marketer, which summarizes what I most want accountants to know and understand about marketing so they get to work with clients they love. Very cool. I love it. And you, Profitable Firm, I don't know how many years has been coming to Deeper Weekend. You know, I I was looking back, I think it's five. I think this will be our fifth year because there was the Mm. one year that we won't speak of that we didn't have it. That's right. At least five years that we've been coming and sponsoring because- The kind of accountants who are at Deeper Weekend tend to be the kind of accountants yeah. that we sort of vibe with. So right. there's the curiosity, there's yeah. the open-mindedness, there's yeah. a willingness to try things, and also the, hey, I could use a little help. You yeah. know, like I want to do really good yeah. marketing, but in this area, I could use a little help. Yeah. Yeah. These are we, – we invite uh, entrepreneurial firm owners. These are the ones yeah. that are, you know, curious like that and want to grow. Yeah. So – Let's let's go all the way back to the beginning, right. and early days. Uh, you're a CPA, and I so am? from yes. Arizona, and you live in Scotland. That's like, right. what the heck? Like, obviously, I mean, like, the natural right. progression. Of Why? Life. You so, know, how you did grow, you go from? You get born in California, and right. then you grow up in Arizona, right. and then hey, presto, you find yourself Scotland. in Scotland. Yeah. So, what <laughs> what's that journey? So that journey had to do with. I mean, honestly, I do remember the day where I was working as an auditor in Arizona Mm. and with no offense to auditing or those who do audits, I was just bored, (laughs) you know, like I was just doing the job day after day, but it wasn't filling my soul. And I decided to take a trip to Scotland, totally different thing, just, you know, with a different organization, took a trip there. And I just, I literally fell in love with the country. Mm. I I believe you can fall in love with countries as well as people. Mm. Like there's just like this connection, you know, when you're trying to tell somebody what's so great about this other person, you're like, well, there's this and this. And, but honestly, it's just, we just connect so well. That was me in Scotland. We just, we were, we were on the same wavelength. So (laughs) I came initially for a couple of years, but then I stayed and then I kept staying and then I got my citizenship and then I bought a house and started a business. And now I just live here. (laughs) This is is my home now. (laughs) So, so did you originally go to Scotland just to, just to stay for a little while and see if you like it? Yeah. So I went for, I went for six weeks the first time and I was with like a volunteer organization. Mm. I was there for that time. But then when I came back to America after the six week trip, I just really missed it. Like I Mm. missed it and wanted to be there. Ah. So I just was looking for a way that I could live there for a time. 
And super long story short, Uh, I got a job at an accountancy firm because of the qualifications that I had uh, and the experience I had. And the accounting firm in Scotland needed an auditor. I was an auditor. And after a couple months of being an auditor, they were like, uh, what if we made you the business development manager and you did like business development and marketing? (laughs) And I'm going... I'm not quite sure what that is, I know. but yes. How do I take that? Let's right. do that. Like, <laughs> or maybe it they're going, exciting. yeah, you suck as an auditor, so. I mean, that is, do you know, you're probably the first person to suggest that as an option. So, you know, if that if that firm wants to weigh in and be like, listen, right. I was listening to your podcast, let's just call it like let's you did suck, it. but you were really personable and you seem to like people. There so you go. we threw you into marketing. There you go. <laughs> And so you're an accountant transformed yeah. into a marketer. And then- yeah, and it's like the, the, tr- the thing is, like, I just found that I leaned towards those topics mm. of like, how can you grow your business? How can you like the marketing for the firm itself, as well as for our clients? I started running seminars. I'm like, I would just like to like, God bless the souls of the nice <laughs> business owners who came to these seminars. And here's me, 25 years old, being like, listen. Here's how this you is it. how you need to do things. And, you know, bless them. They were just absorbing, learning as much as they could. That's I was learning trip. as well. And it went really well for the firm. Like they, you know, doubled their uh, sales, quadrupled their profits. Like wow. we were just, you know, winning at life from wow. doing, from connecting the business development, what mm. we call advisory now. It yeah. was that sort of thing. And yep. then I moved on from there to a network of accountants mm. where I was helping accountants and consulting with them and doing some advisory and marketing. And that led naturally to setting up PF. Mm. So, so you, you eventually just thought you want to do this on your own and you just kind of left the job or something. Well, I kept helping other companies help accountants. And I finally thought, but the way I want to help accountants is to help them do the marketing, like actually write the blog posts, design the web pages, help them record the videos, whatever the actual marketing things are. And at that time, I mean, the industry's changed a lot for marketing and for accountants. At that time, there was nobody doing that. Like Mm. accountants who needed help with marketing were like, um, you know, they had to find a brand agency and then find a different website agency and then find some freelancer to help them write blog. You know, it was all over the place. So we brought it all together and then over the years, we built a system and a, like a, a way, a, a path to doing this marketing for accountants yeah, yeah, and yeah. and helping thousands of accountants with their marketing. Yeah. Well, you're 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 known for it. You're real good at it. Um, and we we serve agencies in our firm, and we've not met an agency that <laughs> focuses on accountants. Um, but it's a market. It needs help. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, but I think it is important that I'm a CPA, and I've true. noticed this even at Deeper yeah. Weekend. Oh, somebody would be like, "Oh, so what do you guys do?" And yeah. I'll say, "Oh, it's a marketing agency, and we serve accountant." Oh, okay, you know, slightly interested. Right. And then I'll just mention that I'm a CPA, and their faces just light up. They're like you're one and of honestly, us. <laughs> Like, yes, like, oh, now I don't have to explain this and this and this. I think that's the key, like whatever market you're Mm. going for, this will be true for the Mm. accountants, whatever their niche is, whether it's an industry or Mm. type of person, as long as you can understand them and talk their language. Like we often have accountants saying, oh, it's so nice. We don't have to explain like, you know, the accounting software, the apps, the all the different apps and how they integrate and what our onboarding is like, because you know, and you get it. Yeah. Now, so a lot of um, the accountancy space doesn't always niche that, but people like you and Thrival, we teach kind of narrowing into a market. But did you mm-hmm. always niche into account? So you run an AC yep. basically. Day one. Yep. Did you, you Day always one, niche like, with accountants? accountants only. Okay. Yeah. I, and, and that for me, that was because I knew that I knew accountants. So yeah. go with what you know. Okay. I knew accountants. I knew like that was why I started the company mm. was to help accountants. And I knew that I was able to, and I had lots of connections with accountants and I was a qualified accountant myself. Mm-hmm. So especially having run the marketing department of that accounting firm, I was going into it saying, I have been there. I have yeah. been in the firm talking to the partner, meeting with the clients. You know, I remember meeting with a a client who came in and was talking with us about all this advisory and basically said, well, you know, you couldn't teach me anything. 
I already mm. already know it all. And we thought, well, that's nice for you, mate. We wish you well. You know, oh, wow. and it was just like one of those small. Yeah, I mean, that, wow. That's but amazing. it was one of those small lessons in like not everybody is going to be the kind of person that you mm. want to work with is going to be best for you or mm. you for them. Not everyone's going to be ready. Mm. And, and that even that tiny little lesson for us at the accounting mm. firm was it's got to be the right kind of person. Yeah. You know, I don't mind if somebody says, listen, I, I joined your accelerator coaching group and most of this is, you know, I know this. That's no problem. I usually tell people that this isn't rocket science. I'm not right. introducing brand new information that right. having a website is a good thing. <laughs> but what I appreciate is the attitude that people come in with and the accountants that we work with are the ones that are like, I can always learn something new. Yeah. I can always like even if it's information I've had before, it'll spark something. I mean, I was reading the audiobook version of my book, which I myself have written mm. and edited, and I know it inside and out. And I would stop the audiobook sometimes and go, hang on, I've had an idea, because the, the idea would distract me as I was reading the oh, rest God. of the audiobook. So I had to stop, write it down, and the editor's going, everything okay? Is there an <laughs> error in the manuscript? And I'm like, no, I just had an idea, and I have to write it down or get focused. I can't. I'm, like, I'm not gonna be able to focus if I don't if I don't put it on yeah, paper. Like you can get, yeah. yeah. So well, you, get, you can get ideas from anywhere, yeah. and it's the adage. Well, I love that. So if so, your agencies you got like twenty people, um, yeah. pretty pretty big agency, really. How, how has how has the accountancy market changed since mm -hmm. y'all been doing this work? Has, has it gotten more sophisticated in areas of marketing mm -hmm. or? What other ways has it changed over the years you've been That's doing? a great question. I've been mulling that over a lot because one of the changes we've made in bringing on more team members is we've got an operations director. We've got more of a management mm -hmm. uh, team. We've got heads of divisions. And so I'm like leading the leaders a bit more rather than mm -hmm. interacting with every single team member the way I used to. And one of the things we've been talking a lot about and in the, the PF has a board now as well. And so oh, in our wow. board meetings, cool. we're talking about where the industry is going, what's changing. And I, I think back to those early days and I feel like the difference is number one, there was a little more persuading in the early days to accountants that they needed to look at marketing. Uh, I don't see that so much anymore. Almost okay. every accountant I talk to either says, yes, I know I need to, uh, or I know I don't know as much as I'd like to, okay. or I am looking at it. I uh, am learning. I am watching yeah. videos. I'm doing that. Um, so that's one change. And another one is the willingness of accountants <clears throat> to just try stuff. Mm. You know, in the old days, there was a lot of persuasion that had to go into showing them the value of writing a blog post. Mm -hmm. Now we run the accelerator coaching group and we're like, right, you need to write a blog post every week for 12 weeks. And I go, like, okay, let's do this. I'm in. Let's go. I've actually written three already. And oh, like, wow. Oh, okay. So I, I feel like there's a real willingness okay. and a desire to learn about it um there is a little impatience i think is one of the things like uh, just how, in the world so? at large yeah well i was thinking about this like first the world at large you know we're all in this instant gratification right. thing which right. we know but still do right but also with accountants i think it taps into this like what thing can i do so that i then get results right i spend this money i get this right and the positive element of that impatience means that you've got accountants who will try stuff mm. and they'll go, well, what if I try cool. these ads? What yeah. if I try this social? What if I get on TikTok? Yeah. What if I whatever? <clears throat> and I think that works as long as you give it a good chance and you look at your patterns mm. of your marketing numbers. So instead of saying, I did three TikTok videos, I got a new inquiry, TikTok equals great. Right. Or I posted four times on LinkedIn, nobody messaged me, LinkedIn equals fail. <laughs> like if you go with that approach, you're never going to succeed in any area of marketing because it's not a one for one anymore. Yeah. Everything is everything is integrated in this this interweb, yeah. not the interwebs, but an integrated web of marketing yeah. where the email you send plus the LinkedIn post you did plus mm. the Instagram reel that your team member sent and it all just fits together at the yeah. right time. Yeah. So I do see a lot of accountants in there in that sort of impatience that I think we all have yeah. um, combined with a little fear that some of us have of like people are spending less money. We're worried about how much things are costing. Yeah. You know, there's that element. You combine that and you can get, 
a like quick, I need to do something in marketing to get results now. Right. And I think there is a positive element of that. Oh, see. And it also has to be combined with that slow, steady, quality, consistent, just keep going approach, yeah. which I believe in and have experienced myself and yeah. the accountants we've worked with. You have that core base of like um, writing blog posts, creating content, mm. recording videos, being present day after mm. day, year yeah. after year. Yeah. That does build up. I mean, yeah. you've seen that with the podcast, I'm sure, and all oh, the yeah. other events you do. Well, that's yeah. that's some of the some of the earlier things you taught us. Um, even yeah. something so specific like a conference, when you know we were yes. we were working through some of the foundations of even just starting campaigns and marketing around a uh-huh. conference because it, it can mm-hmm. it had kind of been word of mouth and a lot of our community yeah. would come and we wanted Julie and I wanted to expand it to a profession wide. Mm-hmm you know, conference. Yeah. And it was it was hard to hear that it's like, hey, this mm-hmm. is consistency. You won't always know what's yeah. working. We're looking at a good yeah. uh really one to two years to really embed yeah. this into the minds of people. Yeah. And then it was something yeah. else that we've always found is true. You told us, which <laughs> which which was wild, is that when you do it all, a lot of people won't necessarily know where they've heard from you. And yes. so you got to hit a lot of things. So even now we go, hey, how did you find out about Thrival? And they're like, I'm not, you know, I can't, I can't remember. Sure. It I'm was just probably hearing a, it. Yeah. yeah. They, they'll list three and or even four if things. they tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like even if they say, well, my friend told me about it. They also saw a Facebook that's video. Right. They also listened to the right. podcast. And they don't even remember what they did. No. And I think that's great marketing. Yeah. I think well, that's great marketing when they don't know where they even heard of you. But see, if you don't understand that and you haven't, mm-hmm. like you had to teach us that, but when we didn't know it, you think, wow, this is not working. But here they are yeah. in front of you I've as a lead. Yeah. Something's working. So there's this layering yeah. effect to marketing. And so, yes. but a lot of times when sales dip, we go, ooh, hurry yeah. and market. And it, it doesn't work that way. Uh, right? I'm so glad you mentioned that because that is, that's a real issue all the time. And yeah. I've especially seen people struggling with that certain companies struggling with that right now. And some accountants who, you know, maybe you've lost a few clients or maybe yeah. clients are closing their businesses yeah. or whatever, and you get worried. And one of the first things that you look at cutting off is a marketing right. expense. That's right. And I don't just say this because I'm I know. the owner of a marketing that's agency, not safe to but do that, that is not what you that is not what you cut off. No, that's and bad. my my analogy yeah. for this is that marketing is like a steam engine. Mm. So when you start up, you gotta put all the coal in and you gotta build it up and it's gotta get warm and you gotta build up this steam and you gotta chug the chug the chug and it's very, very <laughs> slow at first. Yeah. And you gotta spend a lot of money. A train yeah. costs a lot of money right. and all of the coal, whatever. <laughs> So, but once you get that thing going, man, it just keeps chugging it does. and chugging and going along and covering ground. And if you stop it, <clears throat> then you got to start the whole process over That's again right. and you've lost all this time. It's not like you right. stop your steam engine right. and 45 seconds later, you're going where fast steam engines go. I need to look up more information on my analogy. But <laughs> yeah, <you're, laughs> that's a great analogy. Look that up. Great analogy. It is. It's true, though. Like, that's what my experience has been. So I'm always advising people, accountants especially, if you do genuinely mm. need to cut down your marketing expense, mm. which I would at least check some of the other expenses too. Like right. don't pinpoint <laughs> that one with your lifesaver. That's right. Because the impact is going to be felt six months later of that That's decision. Right. Yeah. So if you cut it off entirely in six months, you're going to pick it up because then you'll go, Oh no, we need to do marketing. Mm-hmm. You're, six months behind, it's going to take you three or four months to get back to where you were. And meanwhile, everything's going really slow. And the other trains that have been chugging away, they, now you could slow it down a little, you know, maybe instead of going at top speeds, you're going a little slower, but you're still moving. Right. Right. That's the key. Like keep moving, keep writing. If you are not able to write a blog post a week, Write one a month. Yeah. If you're not able to post do on something. social every day, do it every week. Right. Do something small and be consistent. Yeah. Spoiler alert to one of my future books, which is just keep going. Yeah. Oh, that I love it. I give you so well. Good stuff. Well, I, and yeah. and Julie tells me sometimes, or just talks about marketing, like you said, the steam engine, like this heavy flywheel, you know, to just yes. to start grabbing this thing and keep and start it moving. Yeah 
takes a yes. lot of work. But when it when a so heavy flywheel work. is moving, you can just tap it every now and then, and it just sure, keeps sure. going. And it just keeps going. Yeah, that's it. And so, and I'd, it fits with the beginning of marketing journeys because a lot of accountants who come to us. They spend a lot of time and money and investment yeah. in the foundational areas, like a good brand right. and a good website right. and some of these foundational things. And they're going, oh, this is a lot of money. Right. And we're saying, yeah, but you're literally buying a train. Yeah. You know, like once right. you get this thing going, you don't yeah. have to buy a whole other brand. Right. Maybe you update it that's in a true. few years. That's true. But, yeah. you know, that's where you put the bulk of it. So for many accountants who come to us and they go, well, we've never changed our logo name or colors since mm. 15 years mm. ago when it was, you know, Andrew Bryce and what, you know, like right. whoever these partners <laughs> were that are right. no longer with us. Right. And that's the name of the firm. The dead people. And that's the logo that was designed very obviously 15 mm. years ago. And it looks like it was designed 15 <laughs> years ago, you know, and they're going, you know, this is getting a little harder to show people who we truly are. Mm. And that's because their brand is telling an old story. Yeah. So you've got to spend some <clears throat> some significant investment, let's say, comparatively yeah. to the size of your firm yeah. in the early days of your marketing so that you can let that train keep chugging away. Yeah. And yeah, and it is part of the expense that firms need to have. Sometimes we tell them hundred percent. Yeah, four to five percent sometimes of your uh, of your what that's kind of a benchmark sometimes we'll use I, most revenue. people spend way less than that uh, I was gonna say do you want to hear my percent yeah well, you want to hear it some of these listeners might not want to hear yeah, this no. number. You ready yeah to? what's your percent yeah. that's good my percent is three to ten okay that's the range you need to be in three okay, to that's ten good. percent no I like that sales yeah <laughs> yeah so because, ours and, is four to five of the sales talking, yeah but this is the thing. The reason I say three to 10, mm. what if you haven't done anything yeah. and you need to yeah. spend a big chunk, you need to go 10% in yeah. year one, and then it's like 4% in year yeah. two or something. Yeah. And the thing is, you always have the choice. You want to start at 3%, fine. Yeah. But honestly, if you're not even spending 3%, yeah. what, what are you even doing? Yeah. Like, well, if it's magically coming to you and everything's great, wonderful. Yeah. Carry on. Well, but marketing is meant your to buyer drive. Is Getting smart. Yeah, that's the thing. Our, our world yeah. is changing. And even since, yes. you know, you and I have been doing this work, the post-COVID, the world is completely different. Our it really, do you know, we were talking totally. about this in our team meet today, yeah. like not just the world and how it works, mm -hmm. but like mentally and emotionally, totally different. we have not recovered. We mm -hmm. have not recovered as people. No. We haven't recovered as a world. So I am daily talking mm -hmm. to people who are, struggling or, or feel like things are harder than they used to be or harder than they expected or whatever it be. And and I feel that sometimes too. Yeah. And I have to remind myself, we went through a worldwide trauma together oh, huge. and it yeah. did traumatize us. Right. And some people, you know, leaned into that and moved pretty quickly. But if, you know, if any of you listening haven't, like give yourself some grace because, yeah. wow, it's heavy. there's some heavy stuff here yeah. and it's hard. Yeah. And I think, yeah. you know, you're probably seeing this too. Firm owners, you know, some are exiting the profession, you know, they're yeah. moving out. They're just or, tired. Yeah. They're just tired. The, the team, tired. you know, are struggling, you know, yeah. they're going through their own yeah. things and you got to, you got to um, recognize those things. Um, yeah, and be real with yourself about yeah. what you have the energy and emotional mm -hmm. capacity to deal with. Because um, one of the things that I've noticed is if your marketing is suffering, <clears throat> there's often, you know, if you have a marketing problem, there's a business problem. If there's business problem, you have a marketing mm -hmm. problem. They go together. But often when your marketing is suffering, one of the things you can look at besides what's going on in my business and what am I not doing marketing wise is, is there anything I'm going through personally yeah, as the owner? Totally. Because when that happens, it is marketing. You need to be enthusiastic. You need to be motivated and, and pushing through and trying things, even when nobody's replying, you know, yeah. even when your train is just Which chugging is away and you feel like you're not getting anywhere. Yeah. That is very hard to do if you're struggling in your own mind. So, I mean, the, the point of that one is just give yourself some grace yeah. and also recognize how much emotional energy and mental capacity yeah. marketing takes. This is not just a little tick box that you add to your, okay, as a business owner, I need to hire some people. I need to do this. I need to do some marketing. Right. Like this requires 
a personal connection. That's why collaboration in marketing with your marketing agency, whoever you work with, you've got to have that collaboration yeah. because marketing is a reflection of you and your firm. Yeah, totally. Okay. I want to ask you some more questions. I want to take a quick break for a sponsor message and come right back and ask you something about your book. Yes. I'm excited to share Divi as an exclusive sponsor of the Thrivecast. Unlike expense management, spend management from Divi now lets us provide cards to our team members, apply budgets to those cards with preset levels up front for each team member. And as we've implemented spend management, we no longer have to deal with the messy receipts on the back end of our expense management process. Check out getdivvy.com. That's G E T D I V V Y.com for more information on managing your funds and moving them to the front of your spend process. We're back. Amazing. So, Karen, your book, The Accountant Marketer, mm -hmm. did not start as a book. And I love your story because you and I have talked about it before. It actually came out of other a bunch of other real stuff that you were doing. So can, yeah. can you walk me through kind of where did the content of this book actually come from? What was that journey? Yeah. So it started out, the, the content of this is the summary of, of everything I would love to share with an accountant about what how the marketing pieces work together mm -hmm. so your marketing can be better. And I'd say it was like eight or nine years ago, I created a, a course called The Content Marketer mm -hmm. for Accountants. Mm -hmm. And it was to help accountants utilize content marketing, which at that time was this new concept. Yeah. Like, whoa, we write blog posts, we record videos, <laughs> we create the content ourselves. Amazing. This is mind-blowing new stuff, which now it tends to be content marketing just equals marketing, which right. is great. And I love that. Right. Um, so I was creating this program and I came up with a number of things in order that fit together to explain how marketing fits for accountants, mm. and there happen to be 12. Nice. And we talked before yeah. about how uh, the reason there's 12 is because I counted off the things that I most wanted accountants to know until I was done, and then I stopped. There's 12. And I think that's a good way to number things. Well, you know, if you're making a list, say as many as you need to know, say without repeating them, and there you go. <laughs> so those 12 haven't really changed <clears throat> in the last eight or nine years, and I ran it as a 12-month course. Mm. And then I turned it mm. into a 12 week coaching group, which still runs is called the accelerator. Yes. And I know a lot of thrival members have gone totally. through it. All and the then what I was doing <laughs> was I run the accelerator coaching group and some of the senior PF team members support in co-leading. So they will lead a session if I'm not there ah, cool. or they'll lead it together with me. And that way people get to know the team yeah. and, you know, it's more of a supportive thing. So everything isn't sitting on my shoulders. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that the team members were delivering the content, the core content that I would be naturally most likely to share. Because there's a lot of things we could share. And I wanted to make sure the key points were consistent through the whole team. Yeah. So I documented all these key points in a spreadsheet. Of course, all the accounts listening will be very <laughs> proud of me that I went to G Sheet and started putting Come these on. things in. Karen, proud and of then you. <laughs> <laughs> and then once I had those, like, these are the core messages for each of the 12 <clears throat> sessions, I just opened up a Google Doc and I thought, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to find all the blog posts I've written about mm. blogging and put that in here for session nine, which mm. is on blogging. And all the blog posts and the social posts and content I've written about websites or branding or any of these other areas, and I'm going to put them in this Google Doc and just, you know, combine it together. And that way the team will have a sort of a guide. I might even make it a PDF guide. Mm. You know, I'll make this yeah. PDF guide <laughs> and I'll share it and accountants can read it and it's all very helpful. So I dropped all this content in, probably took me a couple weeks. Mm. And I just did a quick word count and I'm like, I've got 60,000 words in this Google Doc. <laughs> um, that's a book. <laughs> that's a pretty hefty PDF guide. Yeah, yeah that's not <laughs> so, a PDF yeah, I guide. I shared it with the team and that's what they said. They're like, Karen, this is a book. You are not allowed to make it a PDF guide. We will rise up and rebel if you do that. You must make this a book. And, and I really appreciate it. You know, it's great to have a team who believe 
in you and your content so yeah. much. And they knew how it would help us as a company to say, listen, go read chapter four, yeah. go read chapter four before we work on your branding nice. and you'll get the core messages yeah. that we need. Yeah. That's so cool. and that's I the started value of pulling the book. that together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, the value of the book is honestly like work with PF if you want to, and if it's yeah. a fit for you, but if it's not, that's totally okay. Yeah. Like get the book and learn how these 12 elements fit together. Because the thing with marketing is it's too tempting, like we said, to do one little thing and one little thing. And it's all haphazard and it's all very squirrel. You know, you're going <laughs> off after the shiny thing. Right. But the point of this is that you go, right, we start with audience and always everything you do in marketing, whether you're building a website, mm -hmm. writing a blog post, recording a video, recording a podcast. You and I did this. Yep. Who's this podcast for? This is for the accountants. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about things relating to accountants. Right. We're going to mention Deeper Weekend. They're right. going to know what that is. Right. So, you know, flowing from that so that by the time you get to chapter 12, you're like, oh, now I have all the pieces. I yeah. see how they all fit together. I understand why website comes number six and right. not number one. Right. Because right. if you're going to build a website, you got to know who it's for and right. what their issues are yeah. and what your way is. Yeah. But, but, the, but the profession of accounting is it's known for being generalists. Um, and mm. now the, the newer – the the newer firm owners, maybe younger generations, they start off niching. They ain't they're not scared of that. They figured this out, yeah. Um, yeah. and so they they just they start virtual in some bedroom, yeah. and they yes. start getting clients, and they're niched into mm -hmm. some particular focus or service, and they're they're mm -hmm. pulling this off. Like, what what is your message to to accountants who are fearful? of niching, mm -hmm. like it's boring, or I'm not going to have yeah. a lot to talk about. There's not enough clients. Like, how, yeah. how would you combat that? Yeah, we've had that question, you know, in different forms ever since I started PF. And yeah. the summary of what I would say is you have to be specific. Mm. Now, if you understand a niche to be an industry, it doesn't have to be an industry, but it has to be specific. Your audience has to be so clear that the person coming to your website or other marketing material okay. says, oh, that's me. Right. That's for me. Yeah. That is written for me. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one of the firms we work with here in the UK uh, works with business owners mm -hmm. who also have a family. Mm -hmm. Now, they've expanded that to be, listen, family is it's got more of a fluid yeah. understanding. Your yeah. family might look different from what some people yeah. think a traditional family is, but yeah. these are family members who are important to you. And these people struggle with the guilt of when you're working on your business, you uh, wish you were with your family uh, or you feel like you ought to be. Right. And when you're with the family, you feel guilt that you're not working on the business. Right. And they identified that thing. And they said, listen, you love your family and you love your business. You don't have to pick. Mm. You can have mm. both. So anyone listening that goes, oh, I felt that, that's me. I mean, imagine coming to a website and going, Yes, you've nailed it. Mm. And think of the difference between that and somebody saying, we serve small businesses who yeah. are seeking to grow. And right. you're like, it doesn't mean like, that's everybody. You, that doesn't make me gasp with amazement. I'm right. like, yeah, okay. But <laughs> like, I don't know, that could apply to anybody. Yeah. So if you try to market to everybody, you market to nobody. Yeah. And when you, when you market to, I, li I like your word specific. I like that. Yeah, because be that's be as specific as possible. Right. That's like if you think you are specific, <laughs> question it. Yeah. Question everything. Go more. Like yeah. if you say you work with small businesses, I would argue that's not specific enough. No. You need it to be someone who says, Yes, that is me, or no, that is not me. Right. Because good marketing divides. Yeah. And so well that's it's, it's supposed to cause someone to say yes or no. Yeah, it's polarizing, right? It it kind of it yeah. gets people off the fence and says, "I am for you or I'm not for you." That's yeah. what good marketing right. is going to okay. do. Yeah. I think circling back to your point about fear, <clears throat> there's a lot of accountants who have said to me, like you said, "What if I choose this specific audience? Maybe it's yeah. not even an industry niche, but maybe I go after you know business female business owners yeah. who their business makes more than a million and yeah. they've been going more than five years or whatever yeah. it be. What if?" There's this one business owner who's not female or is making 900,000 right. or has six employees. Right. What do I do then? <laughs> and my answer is always, if they're the right person, 
they will get in touch anyway. They will look at your marketing and say, yes, I see that you say that you work with people who have five team members, whatever. Mm. I'm just going to go ahead and try right. to get in touch because yeah. I really like who they are. And then it's a it's a win either way because yeah. you could say, nope, full hard stop at five. We yeah. will not serve people at more than five. We're really sorry. We're not able to help you, but here's another account yeah. you can. Yeah. Or, I, and this is more often the case, you go, yeah, six is fine. It's no yeah. problem. Let's have a conversation. Well, I love that. So, and, and that even talks to the purpose of the marketing. It is to define who you're for and to start that yeah. conversation. And sometimes yeah. th- those people you're looking for look a little different, but they happen to yes. match the vibe of who you're supposed to be serving. Yeah. You can bring them in still. Even, you know, yeah, we, it's your choice. Yeah, we're, we're niched yeah. as a as a firm. We're very niched yeah. into our agencies. But if a great client comes and they mm-hmm. might be a little bit outside that industry, yeah. Julie and I, we're going to talk about it and go, this is a have great a client. Yeah. And sometimes we'll yeah. we'll take yeah, that just, client. Yeah, and just remember, yeah, like you said, it is their choice, or it's yeah. your choice, and it's their choice. Yeah. And your marketing is intended to draw in the ones you most want to work with. Right. Anyone right. else, let them decide if they want to get in touch, right. and they will figure it out. And a lot of people will get a referral, and they might not even spend too much time on your website, perhaps. Yeah. And they just go to your LinkedIn or whatever it be. Yeah. But it's always your choice, and it isn't just like say you do niche in an industry. Mm. It isn't just that industry. You know, we serve accountants. We don't serve yeah. every single accountant in the whole world. True. There's plenty of accountants yeah. who are not a fit for us, and vice versa. And then there's values like that one. I cannot stress enough. Mm-hmm. Like even if you're specific about the location, geography, or type of business owner or size. To be able to say we work with people who are ambitious or gracious or driven or or slow paced or fast paced, like whatever those values are and the the style and approach that they have as a person, that's your choice. You get to decide. And if somebody comes to you as a prospect who is super ambitious and owns 17 companies and wants everything yesterday, and that is not the the way you do business, then you can just say no <laughs> pleasantly right. and choose somebody that you are best placed right. or vice versa. Right. Yeah. And but that's yeah. that's that's funny that a lot of accountants or or probably just a lot of businesses that do marketing feel like it's locking them in. And no, yeah. we're you're messaging appropriately you to who you're supposed yes. to be working with. You always yes. get to say no if you find out your yeah. somebody came to your door through your marketing that happens to be wrong, you can still say no to yeah. them. It's okay. Yeah, and remembering that if they're wrong for you, that doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong like right. for the world. Like right. they might be a really nice person. Right. You know, there are a few there's a few people out there that yeah. just are not nice people, but we can spot those pretty easily. Right. I think one of the challenges that accountants have, matter of fact, I know one of the challenges accountants have because they've told me, is that they feel an obligation to help anyone who comes to wow. them asking for help. That is wild. That's not and true. And you do not, I'm just going to give you permission right now. You don't right now. have to do that. You do not have to do that. <laughs> like, you get to decide. You You always get to decide, even if you serve dentists and you serve dentists who make a million dollars in revenue and have more than 10 employees and somebody comes to you who's exactly like that but you know the vibe isn't there the values aren't there there's a mismatch yeah you can say no no is a full sentence (laughs) that's but that's so wild to just say that that seems so obviously true but it's not Mm -hmm. obvious that if you it's not obvious no if I mean, people don't think they can say no, even if they've marketed to a certain group, but they, but you can and you should. It reflects the good thing though. It reflects the heart, which is they want to help people. Yeah. And I, I struggled with this myself. Like we try to be very specific with who we work with at PF, but from time to time, I've got so excited talking to an accountant, you know, before we were working with them, we all get fired up and we're chatting away and they sign up for all these things. And then we go, oh. Actually, I don't think that was the best thing for you. It might have been, but and I didn't pause for a second to go just hang on, we got to double check. And so you're not always going to get it right. But the better your marketing and your prospecting and your pre qualifying, especially, 
we have time, that might be a good thing to talk oh, about yeah, because that's, big, that's the big, thing big. that helps your marketing to weed out mm. the people who aren't a fit for you yeah. before they even come. So you don't have to have yeah. all these meetings and all this time to go, oh, yeah, no, that's not a fit by. Yeah. You know? Well, the pre qualifier, so just real quick, is that part of marketing? It's probably like forms on the website that kind of kick out the wrong prospect. I guess, right? Yeah, that's part of it. I would say pre-qualifying <laughs> means anything that helps the potential buyer to weed themselves out. Mm -hmm. okay. And then it moves into a place where you can begin to weed out. So by mm -hmm. the time they fill in a form, your form needs to ask questions that will help you know if you see any red or pink flags. Right. So red flags are the obvious, like, right. no, this is not, you know, they only want a tax return. We don't mm -hmm. do tax returns. That's it. Right. A pink flag is like, mm, this could sure. go either way. Right. Like they've said that they've changed accountants twice in the last five years. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Is that because they don't work well with accountants or is that genuinely because, right. you know, their business changed they're the wrong one? So it's not a, um, I always tell people, it's not like if you want to work with people who value your advice, you don't say, if worked with us, would you value our advice? Of course they're going to say yes. <laughs> you got to ask like clever questions. Yeah. You got to be a little <clears throat> sideways about it to say, I'm going to ask this question. The way they answer it will give me an indicator if they're our type of person. Right. So, you know, you wouldn't ask them if they're honest. Right. <laughs> you would ask them. You know, would you be willing to share the last couple of years of your business tax returns with us yeah. or whatever it be that helps you yeah. to make that decision, but make the decision consciously yeah. and think about the cost to your accounting firm of taking on a client who's not a fit and the cost to your team. Cause you know, that's, it's that's hot. tough yeah. when you're trying to help somebody and you're not best placed to serve them. Yeah, it's tough. It is tough on your team. What, one thing yeah. I love that you did in your book, The Accountant Marketer, is um, you at the beginning, you had to convince CPAs or accountants that they're creative. Um, mm. Is that just something you you hear a lot? Of course, I think that's a known profession. It's a, it is. It's not true. But it's it's something it's not true, that everybody knows. It's a statement that, yeah, that everybody says like yeah. accountants aren't creative. I'm an accountant. Right. I'm not creative. And it, yeah, my point in that one was, and that was in what's called Chapter Zero. My introduction became a little longer, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to call this Chapter Zero. This is going to be things you need to know first, like before you get into this. <laughs> it was marketing a long stuff. introduction. I loved it. It was right. I love it. Like, like you may as well call great. it a chapter. It's so many. But I was like, these things. are the things that when you <clears> understand <throat> that you as an accountant are creative, that the team involvement in marketing makes for more successful marketing, and some mm. of these other points, your marketing will be more successful because mm. marketing is very much a mindset game. Yeah. So if you go into marketing thinking I am not creative, I am just the accountant. The marketing team will tell me all of the things that I must do. Yeah. That that isn't going to get the same impact as if you come in saying, I am creative because I'm a human and all humans are creative right. and creativity is this combination of curiosity and problem solving. Mm. And, and I got that from Ed Catmull's book, Creativity Inc., which yeah. I loved. He Good was stuff. like, creativity is hard to define. Yeah, of Pixar. But curiosity right? and problem yeah. solving, that is, that's what accountants do. All these accountants, they're looking at problems, helping solve them and going, hmm, I wonder... What if we, how might we, what about this? That's curiosity. That's what you do. Yeah. So you just apply those principles towards marketing and stop telling yourself you're not creative. If you catch yourself right. saying, I'm not creative, I don't know creativity, or even things like, I'm not a designer, I'm not, right. that's fine. You don't have to be a designer. Right. You're not a designer. But the underlying message sometimes is diminishing what you have to bring, which is so much. You've got knowledge of your clients, knowledge mm. of your team. you got the skills of running a company, a business. Running yeah. a company for more than five years is like celebratory. Yeah, you know, have deal. a freaking party, you know? It's a huge deal. Yeah. So many businesses don't make it. Yeah. So you've got all of this, plus like understanding of human behavior, care for your clients. Mm. So pour all of that into your marketing and, and know that there is creativity in there. Maybe latent. You know, one of the, the things I mentioned in one of the chapters is that uh, the creative thinking that children do up to the age of five is mm. like 98% of them are thinking creatively, yeah. different ways of doing things. And by the time they get to 18, that number's down to 2%. Mm. 
Like we just get that like weeded right out of us. What is the right way? What is the right answer? And as accountants, that is absolutely right in there. You're going, that's my job right. to find the right to answer right. and save the penalties, right. which is great. Do that as an accountant, but not with marketing. Yeah. And you know, it, yeah. everyone's like, what do you think about this? I'm like, well, it depends. Right. The great marketing answer. Well, it depends. That's right. And that, that, I mean, it sounds bad, but that can be true too when you're helping your clients because it depends on a lot of different things your clients can sure, do and, and the paths, yeah. but it doesn't mean you're do doing. I need, do I need a limited company? Well, <laughs> right. And it, well, and it, yeah. right. And it means you're not doing accounting wrong. You're actually helping that yeah. human run their business yeah. well. And there are yeah, a lot of options point. we can kind of help our clients wade through. Yes. So we are creative yeah. and curious. Yeah. So I want to hit some of the, or well, all the chapters in your book. And you mentioned these kind of go in order. Um, yeah. So I'm going to read them and you can kind of give us a rundown of what some of these mean. Um, yeah. So there's audience. These are the okay. These are the chapter titles. Just words. I loved it. I loved one it. Word. Just yeah. one word chapter title. Yeah. I thought that was so cool. Uh, there's audience issues, cornerstone, which you have to explain that to me. Brand yeah. design website. Brand design and website are the thing most people mm-hmm. think they're coming to you for, but that's actually third, uh-huh. fourth, and fifth in this, or uh-huh. fourth, fifth, and sixth, right? Yeah. And then it comes email follow up blogging, video, social media campaign. So it is the 12 things. So what we've already talked about it a little bit, but audience is first because you just have to yeah. know who who are you serving and why, it. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And they all build on each other. So mm. like you and I were talking about how website is is chapter six. It's, six, it's yep. session six, six dollars right in the middle. <clears throat> and you might think, oh like you said, I'll put brand and website as one and two and right. then these other things. But if you don't know specifically who you're serving, Mm. you're not going to be able to have the right brand that reflects that because your brand is not for you. Mm. It's for your audience. I mean, it's about you. There's there's elements of you, but it's not for you. You're creating it for them. Your website is not for you. Your marketing is not for you. It's for them. You wouldn't be doing marketing if you didn't have clients. Right. So- Everything, every blog post you write, every video you create, every email you send, the first question you're asking is who is who exactly is this for? Yeah. And then you naturally move into chapter two, which is what are the issues they face? What are the problems? What is the wrong that needs righted in their life? Mm. And mm. then number three, which you mentioned, the cornerstone. Yeah, what's that? That reflects the summary of your way of doing things okay. at your firm. Which is one of the things many firms are missing, especially if you think about it in terms of a website, for example, yeah. and you say, okay, we have this accounting firm website and most accountants are saying, right, okay, we need a homepage and about page, a services page, et cetera. Right. And, and I challenge that a bit and say, I don't believe from my experience with the buyers of accountancy firm services, which I have lots of experience with them and so mm-hmm. do you, they don't necessarily... Not necessarily. They don't. They do not want to read page after page of management accounts. We will review your accounts right. monthly, no. blah, blah, blah. No. Bookkeeping, payroll, tax, tax, like 47 services pages that all set. They know what an accountant does roughly. <laughs> I realize they don't really fully know everything you do, right. but they're not wondering, do you do accounting things? That's not what they're wondering. They're wondering, okay, you do accounting things, maybe a little of like what specific, you know, do you do tax returns? You know, if there's something unique that you do or don't do, put it in there. But I tend to recommend something like a how we work page. This is how we do things here. When you come to us, this happens first, this happens Mm -hmm. next, then this, because that is what your buyer is wondering. And that's true for any professional services. When I got my whole kitchen done, Mm. I was wondering what happens first? How do we plan it? When do I pay the deposit? When do you come Mm. in? How long is it going to take? How much longer might it take? And the over here, we call it a joiner, which is like a, (laughs) they're like a carpenter and have connections with electricians and plumbers and all the things. They do all the things. Okay. And I had a great joiner and he helped me with all of those things. But even then there were a few things that by the end I was like, it might've been good to know ahead of time. Yeah. But I didn't know to ask the question. And he was just like, Oh, of course, that's how it works. You know, that's obviously you need to pick the lighting. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know. Yeah. So 
these kinds of things are what the buyer of accountancy firm services There's so much they don't know about how the process works. And then you have the opportunity to say, but this is how our process works. When you come to us and you come to, you know, Blummer CPAs, when you come to ABC accountants, this is how we will do things here. And it relieves them. They're like, okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Same thing with pricing. I have a whole section in the book where I'm talking about pricing yeah. and how Huge. you know I understand you're not going to give the prices on the website. Yeah. And I would argue it's probably not a wise plan anyway, because mm-hmm. then they're just looking at the numbers. Right. But you need to address the pricing question. This yeah. is how we approach pricing. Yeah. When you ask for a proposal, we're going to have this meeting. We're going to yeah. ask you these questions for these reasons. This is why we need to know how much sales you make and how many transactions you have and how often you're on payroll. We have to know this to yeah. give you the best quote. Yeah. That's the stuff they don't know. So that's anyway, the cornerstone. All of that is tied up into the cornerstone, which yeah. is your way of doing things, like the summary of your way and the path at your yeah, firm. I love that. And, and I like and those ones flow into then the brand and then design and website. And those first six. That's your foundational stuff Okay. as a firm. Yeah. You know then, who you serve, you know what they're struggling with, yeah. you know your way, you know what your brand is, and you've got the elements of design which flow from that, and then you can build your website from those things. I love it. And I love the I love the ones that come after it because when you when yeah. you do your brand design and website, you're not done, right? So that's right. Right now you have this asset. Just, now, now yeah, you're moving you on. You built the yeah, train the, basically from your <laughs> You got the train. Now you need to start now you dumping. Sell tickets. Yeah, you get people on it. Yeah, you got to get people on it. You got to dump coal in this thing. You got to get it running. And so the right. email follow up and right. blogging, v- video, social yeah. media campaign. This yeah. is what starts to, I guess, leverage the thing that has been built yeah. for them now. Exactly. Like if you and this again is why blogging is chapter nine mm. because if you're going to write a blog post. You got to know who you're writing it for and what right. they're struggling with and right. how you're going to approach things. You got to have a website to put it on. Right. You got to have some emails to send out to tell people that you've written a blog post. And then after you've written the blog, you're going to share that on social media. That's chapter 11. So like all of these pieces come together and you can't, you can, I mean, I'm, it's a long book. I'm not going to lie. I might have a little competition once it's published to be like, okay, so, you know, the account marketer isn't that long. Have you read the Lord of the Rings trilogy? All seven Harry Potter books? Yeah. It's not that long. There you go. Um, side note that my book is about the length of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, just so you know. Like I just checked that word count. You double checked the word count. <laughs> if you've read that, you can read that. The, you of course you had to check which which Harry Potter book is it most similar to Somebody in size. Somebody was asking me. They were like roughly like what is your book size compared to other books? And I'm like, well, a lot of business books are only about sixty thousand words. Yeah. And I was like, I like the Harry Potter books because like everybody can see those right you know, visually. Right. I love yeah. it. So it's no goblet of fire, Jason. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how thick those are. I think I've listened to them. Uh, I think, right. yeah. But the Lord yeah. of the Rings, I'm into that one. So that one's a long one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. as we wrap up, so um, you always bring me some Scotch whiskey every deeper weekend. I do. I do. I'm a good person that <laughs> you way. You are good. Now, what's and real- I also love whiskey and I love sharing it. Uh, so, well, yeah. it's good stuff. But the the cool thing is how Scotch whiskey matures over time mm, yes. and it yes. is such a cool story uh that yeah. you and i love scotch whiskey so it's yeah. how does how, how is marketing like that like now you yes. now you could teach us about how the scottish distilleries actually talk yeah. about their their time of maturing that's a big deal to them right it is yeah it is it's a huge deal because like, <laughs> I, i'm a, a passionate whiskey fan for many reasons. One is I love the fact that nothing is ever wasted in the whiskey process. Like, you know, the water and the malt and all these extra things. But the other thing I love is that good whiskey takes time. There is a minimum requirement in Scotland. It cannot be called Scottish whiskey if it has matured less than three years. Oh my gosh. And it may only have three ingredients, water, yeast, and grain or barley. Yeah. Like that's it. 
That's all you're allowed to have. And then there's, of course, everybody gets super creative with this because you've got distilleries that use the peated smoke right. when they're yeah. roasting the grains and things. And that's what gives the smoky kind of whiskey. Yeah. And then there's other ones that don't use it. But at the end of the day, it's those three ingredients and it's got to be in the cast for at least three years, yeah. but often five, 10, 25, 50. Depends. And the longer it's there, the more valuable it is yeah. and the better it tastes if you like whiskey. And just as a side note, for all, there are so many Americans, especially I've spoken to, are like, oh, I don't like whiskey. And let me just like advise you right now, just hold fire <laughs> saying that unless you have, number one, gone through a Scottish whiskey distillery tour. Ah. And like learned how they made it. Yeah. And if you have drank good whiskey slowly, ah, not gold. <laughs> slowly <laughs> is how this is not, we're not like shots of Jack Daniels here. <laughs> like, right. this is not what we're talking about. Shots of, shots of JD are like, that's for your, like, <gasps> let's do a Facebook ad that's tomorrow. Right. That's the kind <laughs> right. of direction that, that you go. Right. You know, it can work, but right. uh, it might not. But what I'm talking about is good quality content marketing. You're in it for the long game. Yeah. And the distillery I specifically mentioned in the book is one of my favorites called Glen Goyne Distillery. Mm. It's about 30 minutes up the road from my house here in yeah. Scotland. All these winding roads to it and nice. beautiful place. And they've got these huge letters on the doors of their distillery that says the right way is the long way. Uh. And they have the <laughs> slowest stills so the stills these copper yeah. stills that distill the yeah. the alcohol they have the slowest uh, ones in uh, scotland and they are so proud of that they're like listen <laughs> good things take time and i remember looking at that the first time i went there and i was like oh it's just like content marketing <laughs> because and this actually comes from marcus sheridan's book they ask you answer he specifically yeah. says if you're going to create content marketing and you're going to create good content every mm. week you need to do it for two to three years. Mm. That's when you get to this drip feed of like, wow, people are coming to us. I don't even know where from. That's true. And mm. a lot of people bulk at that because they're looking for the quick win and the, okay, this other accountancy firm tried this and they got success in three days. Yep. They probably didn't, but you know, mm -hmm. that's the story that's being told. Yep. And then you try it and then it doesn't work. And then you try something else for three days and something else for three days is very much tortoise and hare stuff. Yeah. If you just plug away one step after the other in the right direction and be consistent with it, you will get to that beautiful place where you're like, oh, hey, we got whiskey now. And yeah. it's good and it's valuable yeah. and it's worth selling and drinking and enjoying. Yeah. That's what it's like with content marketing. It doesn't mean that you won't get successes early on. Mm. It doesn't mean that you won't have, like we've had people join Accelerator <laughs> within two weeks. They've written a blog post and got 30 grand's worth of new business. Man. And we're going, That's rare, okay, but right? it's not just, yeah. Right. Well, I don't know. These days it seems to, all kinds of things seem to happen, Yeah. but it's built on these other things. They've yeah. invested in their brand. They mm. ran an event. They did whatever it be, but the blog post or the video or whatever was the, the final point that caused somebody to go, hey, I'm, I'm ready for this now. Mm. So if you want the quality marketing, the stuff that lasts, all good things take time. We know this. If mm. you're going to be healthier, you're yeah. not going to go to the gym for three days and be like, oh, I dropped 40 pounds. Oh, my right. gosh, look at me. No. But, you know, like that's not how it works. Yeah. It's got to be small things day by day consistently in the same direction. Good things take and that's time. what gets you there. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Well, how do people find your book? What's the best place to, to get it? Yeah, best place to go directly to it is my personal website, which is karenlrayburn.com. And you can pre-order it there. It comes out in October, all being well. <laughs> it's been a long process. Come on. But you can pre-order it, and there's some bonuses there. You can download Chapter 0 and Chapter 1 and read them straight away. Love it. There's a workshop session with me, so all of that's in there now. And then if you do want to look at my agency, wearepf.com, all of the info about how we do things, the marketing map, and it, it all ties in together. And certainly, you know, read the book, enjoy it, learn from it, tell me what you got from it. And if you want help, there's the Accelerator Coaching Group, yeah. which goes through the 12 and it all yeah. matches. I Session four, chapter four, it all fits. I love it. And we hope you're going to have the book at Deeper Weekend in October. I am really, really hoping. I'm trying hard not to make promises because okay. it's been a, let me just tell you, publishing a book, there's some, it's a, 
It's a learning experience, Jason. I've learned a lot. I will say that right now. Well, All being it. well, we'll have physical copies there and uh, in PF Yellow, of course. Of course. I love it. Okay. Well, Karen, thank you so much for coming and teaching about teaching us about your book and marketing. And I think we've uh, we've blown away a lot of myths about marketing, I hope. Um, that, Maybe a few cobwebs. Yeah, a little well. cobwebs. And it's something that everybody needs to commit to. The world's yeah. changing, but we kind of – those are opportunities when things change like that. We, we get to kind of move out in front a little bit yes. when we really commit to some of these things that, that push us forward. So – Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and the principles apply regardless of how the world changes. That's I believe. true. Yeah. So, well, yeah. cool. Well, Karen, thank you so much Thanks. for being a good friend, teaching us, and coming on the show. And we'll see you Pleasure. at Deeper Weekend in October. Thanks for having me. Okay. See you there. Okay. Bye bye.